Happy Friday, everybody. We're getting ready for Labor Day weekend, our final weekend without NFL football for about five months. How about that? It's pretty good. <laughs> I'm excited. It's actually it's more like five because we go almost halfway into February now, right? So we're looking at almost five and a half months of consecutive weekends with NFL football. We had some nice college football last night. I don't mm-hmm. know how much you watched of that. The end of the North Dakota State Colorado game was fun. So maybe we should post a time management seminar for some of these teams that are out there. Just run the ball, dude. I don't know what you're doing. But we're getting ready for Giants and Vikings uh, coming your way. Now in about nine days at MetLife Stadium, Giants celebrating their 100th season. Yeah. Uh, we got the Fan Fest next Friday, the 5K run on Saturday, and then, of course, the game on Sunday, which will be just a whole weekend of celebration of the 100th greatest Giants and the Giants 100th season. So I believe Paul and Matt handled all of our roster moves yesterday. You guys talked about the neighbors thing as well, correct? Mm -hmm. So they hit all of that. So I'm not going to waste time regurgitating the same information. We are going to try to take a lot of your calls today at 201-939-4513. So every year, Paul and I do our, uh, well, this is the second year, not every year, but we're going to try to do it every year, our little wins contest where we draft our teams and try to figure out which one of us comes out with the most wins. Paul, unfortunately for me, did win last year's contest thanks to my selections of the Jets and the Chargers, <laughs> which did not work out well for me. Well, the quarterback got hurt four plays in. For the Jets, yes. And, and the Chargers were just one of those teams that, that fell apart. So I could have survived just the Chargers because you picked the Giants, and the Chargers and the Giants, I believe, finished with the same amount of wins. Yeah. Right? They both finished with six last year. I think so. so the Chargers, I think, had six, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Chargers might have five, maybe? Whatever the case might be. I could have survived, but the whole Aaron Rodgers thing kind of sunk me before the whole Sunk the Jets, too. Started. Yes, it did. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is how this works. We each going to pick six teams. We go back and forth. We pick teams, and we try to figure out uh, which one of us will pick teams with the best wins. I'm going to throw a little twist at you now too here's a twist okay what do you got so at the end of picking our top six whichever one of us does not pick first in the overall selection and you won last year so you can pick first um and then here's one flip a coin for the other one each one of us has to pick one team that won six games or fewer last year and that will be added into the top six that we select for most wins so basically we're predicting the team that we think is most likely to bounce back Oh, okay. Off of last year, which okay. I think could be fun. Okay. So you can bring up the standings from last year. You kind of think about that as we go. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, exactly. I should definitely take a look at that. Uh, but I think it's fair, Pierce. I was going to say you should flip a coin to see who goes first. But since Paul won last year. Oh, I don't mind. I think it's only fair that he gets to no, pick no. first, yeah, correct? No, flip, no flip a coin. No, you won. You get to pick first. You, you, you earned won. it, Paul. You, get to, All you, right. you earned it. You get <laughs> to pick first. You, you won. All right. Um, the thing that, 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 that really hits me here is that we know the 49ers just got their uh, Brandon Ayuk thing done. But they do not have their Trent Williams thing but done. But they do not. They do not. <laughs> which do which not. honestly is probably more important. I concur. And so, you know, when I knew this was going to be coming up, I had penciled in San Francisco, and I was like, okay, so they got to get both of these guys done, right? Well, they didn't. They only got one of them. <laughs> and I'm with John. I don't I don't think the Ayuk one is more important than Trent Williams. I just don't. I'm sorry. I, I think Trent Williams is is just incredibly important. Well, to here that. here's the problem. If they don't have Ayuk, well guess what? They still have Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, and yes. George Kiddo. Yes. They don't have Trent Williams. They don't have guys like that that can pick up the slack for Correct. him. Correct. Correct. Uh so so you're gonna laugh, but it came down to for me, uh the Lions. Believe it or not, I know. I know. Go ahead, laugh. It's no, okay. I'm not. I'm not laughing for the reason you think I'm laughing. Oh, okay. Because it came down to the Lions for me, and then on the other side, obviously the Chiefs. Because the Chiefs are the Chiefs, and Andy Reid is Andy Reid. Pearson, when I talked to you yesterday, who are my top two teams? Lions and Chiefs. <laughs> Those are my top two teams too. So pick one of them. I'm gonna take the other one. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. You know, lately we have been thinking a lot alike. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, thank you. I appreciate your sympathy on that, Paul. You're very, 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 very welcome. Um, so uh, I'm I'm going to go uh, between the Ch- uh, Lions and Chiefs, Lions and Chiefs. I will go. I think you got to go Spags. You love Spags. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Kansas City. Okay. Chiefs were number one on my list, so I'm not going to. I mean, guys, the Lions are really good. 
They got good te- and guys I'm a on Dan both Campbell guy roster. too. Remember that? And I, I like Campbell. You can so. make the argument for teams in other divisions, but I think those divisions are really, really tough. So I think you want to maybe avoid the really tough divisions. And not that I think the NFC North is weak. I don't. I actually think it is a pretty good division. But yeah. uh, unless Jared Goff gets hurt, I don't see really, much like with the Chiefs, I don't see much of a window where they're not going to be a really good team. So yeah. I'm going to uh, go with the line since you went with the Chiefs. Go ahead. Go yeah, I, I, I concur on that one. Um I'm really fighting myself on on the next one because Well now you can go to the 49ers if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, but to be frank with you, I'm still concerned about Trent Williams. Fair enough. I mean All right. Well, where are you going? Oh you're tempting me with Trent Williams. You're tempting me to the Niners, though. I gotta confess, you are tempting me with the Niners. The Trent Williams thing bugs the hell out of me because I honestly, I'll be frank with you, I don't even know who their left tackle is if he doesn't play. I didn't look. I didn't look at the depth chart. Do you know who it is? I not off the top of my head. All right, head. you don't know I'll either. Look it up right now. Hold on, hold on. All right, let's Let look, look it up. up. I got it. You keep thinking. Okay, because I'm not. You guys probably know this. I'm not a huge Brock Purdy fan. I think he is a result of circumstances. System. You would term him a system. Quarterback. Yes, yes, I would. Not to mention the talent around him. Are you excited about uh, Jalen Moore? I don't even know who he is. <laughs> Apparently, he was a fifth-round pick in 2021. I did not know who he was. Okay. I got to be honest with you. Folks, I tell you all the time, I am brutally honest with you folks on this program. And then their two offensive tackles would be Jalen Moore and Colton McKivitz. <sighs> McKivitz, I know who he is. Yeah, but he's still not great. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll... I'll go Rams. Woo! I'll go Rams. Woo! That is spicy, Paul. I like that. I'm being a little bold. I like that. I'm being a little bold. I got a, I got a hunch that they're going to be one of the surprising teams this year. They're going to be a lot better than people think. All right. I, 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 Paul, I like that pick. All right. I'm going to go chalk then. But I, I, I'm trying to sneak a team by you here. I'm going to take a chance that you're not going to take the next, even though they are third on my list. I'm going to try to use a little strategy here. I'm going to go with the 49ers just because I think Kyle Shanahan is so good at what he does. He can limit the impact of Trent Williams' absence a little bit. You think so? And then a little bit, and then maybe by week four he's back. So I'm going to go, you know what, though? He did hold that all that, that whole year for the commander. So you never know with Trent Williams. I know. He's very stubborn. I know. He's very... And by the way, who is their backup to Purdy right now? Oh, you know what? That's... Uh, I actually love the depth chart up right now. It is... Uh, oh, Joshua Dobbs and Brandon Allen. You know what, Pearson? I'm going to go with the team I actually have third on my list instead of going chalk here. I'm not going to be strategic. I'm actually going to pick the team I think is my, is my third team on my list. I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. Okay. I am not as high in the Texans as other people, and this kind of got me in trouble last year, but I think that division is one of the weaker ones in the league, I, and I'd just be very surprised if they don't win that division fairly easily. So and instead of the Niners? Instead of the Niners, I'm going to wow. go Texans. Yes, that's correct. So you can take the Niners off there. The whole Trent Williams, he could hold out the whole year. He basically did it with the Commanders. You just uh, don't know. He's very bold. Um, he, he, he is bold. Is probably bolder than my selection of the Texans here. So... I think see I think they're I think the Texans offense is going to be spectacular. I think they have a great quarterback, they have three good wide receivers, they got a good running back. I don't love their offensive line, but I think it's good enough. And I think their defense while not great, I think it's good enough. So, I'm going to go with the Houston Texans here for my next pick. Okay. Um this is a this is a, a toss up for me. I think Jacksonville is going to rebound a little bit. Okay. They took a little swoon last year, just a little bit. I know you're a big Trevor Lawrence guy. Yeah, I am. And they took a little dent last year. And I do think that Doug Peterson um, has done some really good things, and and I don't think they're going to be down for long. Problem is, Texans will probably win that division. So how many wins do the Jaguars have? And this is a a game based on total wins. Yeah, total wins. Um. Jaguars would be bold. I like that. Well, Jaguars, I, I think it's a solid pick. And we'd also be going head-to-head then with Jaguars and Texans, yes. which is kind of fun. Yes, yes. And we're also, and well, yeah, if you pick them, then we're going to go head-to-head in another one, too. Well, the, 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 the other team that I've considered here, again, the Niners still have to be a consideration. How far do they drop? Mm-hmm. And then the Ravens are the other one. The Ravens are next. That's my, too. those mm-hmm. are my three teams that I'm, that I'm fighting and you guys know I'm not a big Lamar Jackson guy, but it's more because of postseason and more because I think he's always going to get hurt. 
but the Ravens have a lot going for them. They were just in a really tough division. That's the problem. They're a really, really good team. tough And they division. also, by the way, lost a lot of their defensive coaching staff. Not just their coordinator. They lost like three assistants on top yes. of that. And their offensive line, they lost three starters. So are they a lock to win 11 games? They, I don't know that. Are, are they a lock to win the division? I can't say that. I agree. All right. I will... Uh... I will go Jaguars because I just don't. I just don't like the AFC South. I, I think the Colts and Titans are not good football teams. All right, Pearson. Yeah, Pearson, there's a lot of wins there. So we're, we're, will someone just take the Niners? I know. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. So we're gonna go head to head in the AFC South with the Texans and Jaguars. Now we're going Rams Niners head to head in the NFC West as well. So I okay. like that. I'm gonna go Niners, which leaves the other team you're picking from for for your next pick. Yeah. Um, all right. As much as I I don't really want to do this. Um. Oh man, go for it. They were, the, they were the next team for you. Yeah, well, that that the Ravens are the next team for me. But again, I I'm with you, John. I I got a hunch. I I just I I don't know, man. Well, I, the Ravens are literally the the fifth team on my list. So yeah, I know. They, 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 I know. They make sense. I know. The one thing I will say though about it is that I've I've never been a big Ravens fan. I believe in Harbaugh. And I've never been a big no. Lamar Jackson there's, guy. But there's no debate about how good Lamar is in the regular season. There isn't. He's, he's there been, isn't. He's a two-time MVP. Absolutely. You know? And this game is not about postseason. No, This is, is about not. regular season wins. Correct. Ravens, go ahead, do it. All right, I'm going head-to-head -head again, Pearson. Here we go. I'm going Bengals. I think the Bengals have a bounce-back year. Okay. Joe Burrow, for the first time in a long time, is actually healthy heading into the season. We haven't seen that in quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, we know Lou Anamaro is a good defensive coach. They Love got, him. T. Higgins is there. I have confidence that Jamar Chase will get figured out and they'll get him there playing. So I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Cincinnati Bungles there, Mr. Butler. How many teams are we choosing? Six each. Okay. So we're each at four now, correct? So each of us have to pick two more, if I'm not mistaken, right? There we go. All right, so you got two more teams, Paul. You're up next. Yeah. Uh <sighs> no teams from the NFC East selected yet? Nope. No teams from the NFC South selected, and I think that will remain constant throughout this competition. But somebody's got to win those divisions. Oh, yeah, it might, but they still might. They might do it with nine wins, though. <laughs> this is true. Well, especially the NFC South. I, I think. Whoever, I know. Whoever wins the NFC East, I think we'll get the double digits. I'm with you, and that's why, to be frank, I, 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 part of me says, "Look, somebody's got to win the division. You got to pick one of those teams." I kind of want to force him to pick the Eagles or Cowboys, but, ju just to see him like writhe as he does oh, it. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> I just ate lunch. <laughs> I know you did. Very good chicken sandwich, by the way. Uh, I'm sure I'll, the people are interested. Yes. <laughs> uh, Raiders. Wow, you're doubling up because you picked the Raiders in our contest for which teams will have their win totals increased a lot too. Raiders. Wow, look I at believe, you betting on Minshew. I, I believe in Antonio Pierce. All right. And I, I also don't believe very much in that division right now. Pearson, you know. I'm going to go on my other sleeper team. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. They closed last season very strong. They were really a couple plays away from playing in the NFC title game. They almost beat the 49ers in that game. They just made Jordan Love literally the highest paid quarterback in football. <laughs> they have a new defensive coordinator, and defense was their big issue last year. They bring in uh, Shaffley from the from Boston College in college to, to, to be their D.C. They have... A quartet of young wide receivers that I think are only going to get better with time. Josh Jacobs is a good running back. I think they do a good job on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. I think the Packers are going to win at least 10 games this year. And I think them and the Lions might go down to the wire for who wins the NFC North. So I'm going to mm. go with the Green Bay Packers for team number five for me. Okay. Uh, Atlanta Falcons. What the hell? Wow. If Paul wins this competition, Pearson, I will shake his hand because he is going out on a limb on a couple of these. Okay, after your sixth one, I'm going to pick six that are left. Oh, my gosh. Are you really? Yeah, okay. I think there's still good teams. No, there are, there are there are some good teams left. All right, so you're going to make me now. The, the NFC South is not good, John. No, it is not. And it, and if, if oh. Kirk Cousins are puts the up the kind of – Well, if Kirk Cousins oh. right. puts up the kind no, of I numbers he can in the regular season – and, and Robinson can do what we know he's capable of, maybe the Falcons wind up winning 10 games in that division. All right, so here's what I'm down to. I got two teams. 
Eagles and the Bills that we have not selected yet. The Eagles, I think, have too much collapse potential. We saw it in the last year. Mm -hmm. They still have the same head coach. I think they're supremely talented. I think they're the most talented team in the division. But there's something going on down there that scares me a little bit. Well, coaching staff changed again with the coordinators. Yeah, but Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore, they have a long history of success in the league. So Can't there's reason that. to have confidence in them. But again, there was something going wrong there at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Jason Kelsey's not there. Fletcher Cox. Those are like the stabilizing forces of that organization. And they also signed an often injured all-pro running back. <laughs> Oh, and again, but I think that <laughs> Saquon's not going to hurt that locker room. He's, he's no. a good dude. No. And I don't want to have to root for the Eagles. So I'm going to go with the Bills. I think, jo <laughs> I, I think Josh Allen is the second best player in the NFL after Patrick Mahomes. Oh. He's a machine. He runs for 15 touchdowns, throws for 25. He does it all. I don't love their receivers. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, I think, is going to have an all-pro season. And their defense, Matt Milano, I get it. It's banged up. It's not the same. But I will bet on Josh Allen here, and I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills. And you're right, Pearson. There are probably six good teams left here. Who, who I already are you, have them. Who are you going with? I'm going Cowboys, mm -hmm. Jets, Eagles, Dolphins, Bucks, Browns. It's funny, Pearson. I had a list of 12 teams here. The teams I had left on my list were the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, the Jets, the Browns. And the only one I did no not Bucks, have on there huh? was the Bucks. Well, that whole division no one chose. Okay, so now each of us now has oh, to Falcons. He did now each of us has to pick one team under six wins that had last six year. Wins oh, six wins or fewer. Six or fewer. Yes, yeah, six or fewer. Pearson, since you got to pick the scraps of the top six, I will you select one team that had six wins or fewer last year to add to your group. I have to look up the. Standings. Okay, so that's. Well, no, I, I have them right now here. The, 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 Cardinals, the teams Commanders, with six wins Panthers. or fewer last year were the Patriots, the Titans, the Chargers, the Giants, the Commanders. You can select the Giants if you like. The Carolina Panthers and the Arizona Cardinals. I will take the Patriots. Oh, there he goes, Mr. Massachusetts. No reason. No, that, yeah, well, no, th there's a reason. It's not a good one, but there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> no football-related reason. You you do know they just claimed a couple of offensive tackles the other day on waivers, right? Yeah, Bob. yeah, they're building it up. <laughs> they're building it up. <laughs> All right, Paul, I will give you a chance to take the Giants here. I, I will take okay, the Giants. I know you will. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to take them away You're from you. You're very kind. I wasn't going to take them away from you. Thank you. All right, this is interesting because I think of the teams remaining, I think the Arizona Cardinals are the best team. The problem is that the NFC West is really good. The yeah. Seahawks, I think, are going to be around 500. They could be a playoff team. The Rams and Niners are two teams that we picked in this competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They could both win double-digit games. The other team I think is going to be better are the Tennessee Titans. Okay. They added a lot of people in the offseason. It's a weaker AFC South. But I'm choosing between Kyler Murray and Will Levis. And... I think Will Levis was better than people gave him credit for coming out last year. I think yeah. he was he should not have been a second round pick. He should have gotten into the first round last year. And I think he's actually gonna play pretty well. And I think with the Callahan family there coaching, they're gonna have good <laughs> offensive line play, which I think will help them. Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears, I think, are gonna run the ball well for them this year. They brought in Calvin Ridley, they have DeAndre Hopkins. Like they have some players there, right? And I think the offensive mm -hmm. line will be better because of the coaching. But I can't pick Will Levis over Kyler Murray. Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. I worry about the Cardinals' defense, but I think their offense is going to be pretty good with Trey McBride and Michael Wilson. They drafted him last year. We liked him. Now Harrison. I think their offense is going to cook a little bit. I don't know about okay. the defense. Okay. That could be a big problem now. Don't, well, don't get me wrong. This is why you made this a special yes, selection. correct. So I am going to go. I'll, I'll bet on the quarterback. I think of all these teams, Kyler Murray is probably the best quarterback in the group of teams we have here, most proven. So I'm going to go with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals as my seventh team. Now, interesting, unless I happen to miss it, uh, all of this uh, hype about the number one pick and the quarterback Williams in Chicago and all the other talent that they have, none of us decided to pick the Bears in any way, shape, or form. I think it's the – well, first of all, I think the Bears are going to be pretty good. It's just the division's really tough. If I really believe in the Packers and I really believe in the Lions, then you can't pick the Bears. How good are the Bears going to be? Hmm. 
I think the Bears are pretty good, to be honest with you. I think they can have, I think the Bears will win eight or nine games this year. And they won seven last year, so you couldn't pick them as your supplemental pick. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Pearson, do you want to list the teams off for us? Uh, each person, what they have? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. What do we got? We have Paul's team. Chiefs, Rams, Jaguars, Ravens, Raiders, Falcons, Giants. Okay. John, Lions, Texans, Niners, Bengals, Packers, Bills, Cardinals. Pearson, Jets, Dolphins, Bucks, Browns, Cowboys, Eagles, Patriots. And that's from the scrap heap. And you <laughs> and you might very well win. Uh, he could. No, look. With, with, sure with, he could. With, A lot of good teams, is, man. He could easily win. Look, of the teams Pearson picked, he could have three division winners in that group. Absolutely. The he Browns could. can win the division. The Jets can win the division. The Eagles or Cowboys can win the division. And Bucks too, right? They have a chance to win that division. So that's Dolphin, four. Dolphins too, yeah. Uh, Dolphins too. So yeah, that, there you go. So I mean he is he is a real shot there, I think. This will be fun. It'll be good to keep track of this during the year. We should almost create stakes for this. Like the the winner has to make the other two guys do something embarrassing <laughs> at the end of the year or something. Uh it's too late. You didn't, <laughs> you, you didn't, you didn't do that, so we can't do it. Well, we can, we, we, we can discuss it right now. No, 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 no. It's too late. I might have thought about it differently if there were stakes involved. You are no stranger to doing embarrassing things. Uh, I, I, <laughs> one time, I forced myself to eat a shoe. What? You don't remember that? No, I don't remember you eating I a do. shoe. When well, did you I, eat a shoe? I took a bite out of the sole. I didn't actually digest it, but when was this? It was some... Explain, no, tell the story. Come on, you can't was, just say you eat a shoe and then not tell the story. It was some years ago, and the Giants were playing an absolute patsy. I can't remember what team it was now, and I said, if the Giants lose this game, I'll eat my shoe. And so I took my shoe and I bit down on the uh, heel. Uh, not the heel, on a the A man side. of his word, I like it. Because I, I, I said what I said, and they lost. So, And you still haven't learned your lesson about underestimating opponents. It happens sometimes. <laughs> he just learned the don't make stakes. Yeah, correct. That's correct. Yes. There you go. I did learn that the 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 bottom of a shoe really does taste bad. Yes. Well, especially if if you've worn it before. I just like just like bison burgers. It tastes just like a bison burger. It's really bad. Why you gotta take out the take it around the bison for? Because it tastes like the bottom of a shoe. 201-939-4513. We talked about the 100th weekend, folks. Well, there's a lot of great stuff going on, including the Giants Fan Fest, free and open to the public. It's Friday, September 6th, presented by Wendy's MetLife Stadium. Starts at 5 o'clock. That's when the gates open. 100th season of Giant Football Celebration. We honor the top 100 Giants. You have autographs, panel discussions, uh, historic displays. You can take photos with the Lombardi trophies and an awesome drone and fireworks show at the end of the night. Uh, Paul and I will be there doing some recording some podcasts that will kind of spread out and do over the course of the year. It should be a lot of fun. Go check out the Giants Fan Fest. And the day after, in the morning, you can go check out uh, the Giants Foundation. They'll host the 5K and Kids Run presented by Quest. The following morning, Saturday, September 7th, 9 a.m. at MetLife Stadium. Net proceeds will benefit the Giants Foundation. All participants will receive a commemorative T-shirt. And after the race, stay for a post-race festival with appearances by Giants legends and a live DJ. Register now at Giants.com slash 5K. All right, we got people on hold. Yeah. Let's get to them here at 201-939-4513. And then at the very end of the show, folks, I'll give you my over-under selections, Paul and... Cytac did theirs yesterday. I'll give you mine at the end of the show. Let's lay a uh, lead off with Jay and Phoenix. Jay, what's going on? Hey, guys. Yeah, great discussion. Fun to hear about your predictions on the uh, how the, the league's going to go. And, and I think it was there's been there's some number out there that says, like, you know, 50% of the teams that make the playoffs won't make it the next year. Yeah, Jay, yeah but Lance know? and I went through that before. Something like over the last 10 years and every year except for like two, half the playoff teams switch from one year mm-hmm. to the next. The quicksand yeah. of mediocrity. Exactly. And unfortunately, the Giants fell into it last year. So hopefully hopefully we're pushing for a playoff spot that will keep the season interesting. And Jay, remember, um, I just want... and Jay, remember the same team has not won the NFC East two years in a row since 2004. Mm-hmm. So tough luck for the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, that... so, it'll be somebody else's turn this year. Yeah, exactly. It gives us hope. Um, you know, I was calling because I wanted to just touch on two things. One um, was the roster, and then, um, well, I guess it kind of goes with the media. You know, I much like probably a lot of the people who listen to your show, I like to listen to all the press conferences and so on and so forth. And i got to be honest, you guys are both, you know, probably trained journalists and went to school for it. 
like, can we, can we come up with a format or something where they just give them all the ridiculous information that they, they ask for like over and over and over about injuries and what's the nature. Dable's never going to open up. Like it's, a, it's, it's almost like a complete waste of time. I'd love to hear a little bit more. I know he's not going to go into strategy and th- things like that, but I'd love to get more from him than this combative. I'm going to keep my, you know, Bill Belichick esque type of, you know, press conferences and the questions they get asked the, that the media asks. It gets ridiculous over over time. I don't know what what your guys' thoughts are on that, but that's and maybe you can't comment on it, you know, because it's you know not peer. You want me to take a I shot mean. at this? Uh, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. So, okay. Paul, if you want to get yourself in the trouble, go ahead. Please. No, no, no. <laughs> look, look. Every head coach <laughs> has his own mo as to how he's going to handle a press conference, how he's going to disseminate information, and how much he wants to give out. A head coach has a right to do that. That's part of the job description. And that's what he's getting paid to do. So he is well within to do how he sees fit. So there's really nothing to talk about in that regard. As far as the rest of it, here's what I will tell you. There was a time during the last couple of years of Tom Coughlin's tenure here where he got so tired of all of the monotonous and repetitive questions about injuries that he would actually have a paper distributed with the list of guys who were not going to practice. You remember that, John? Tom decided that, and that's his call. Remember, he's the head coach, so he gets to make that call. Oh, he can do whatever he wants. He had decided he was so tired of dealing with the waste of time and the repetitive questions about practice availability, they would, he would just tell the PR staff, okay, at the start of my presser, before we, we start the questions, hand them a piece of paper that has all the guys who are not going to practice today with the pre-practice injury report. And that actually eliminated a lot of the waste of time. Now, whether or not the Giants want to move forward and go back to that again, that's Brian Dable's decision and maybe Pat Hanlon's decision. I don't. Maybe both of them collaborate and decide if they want to make a change. But I will say to you, that's probably the only time I can remember in recent years where the press briefings did not have a chunk of time wasted on repetitive injury-related information. And, Jay, I will, I will say something in, in defense of the writers here. This is what their editors want them to ask because they well, want, sure. they want yeah, them sure. to tweet it out. They get all the retweets and the likes. Yep. Then they'll get more of that engagement. So when they post articles later, more people see it. They'll click through to the article. So this is, this is all connected to what their editors and their – you know, newspapers or, or whoever they happen to be working for want them to do. And Jay, remember what's what's the big thing besides you know fantasy and gambling that drives a lot of the fan base to the attention right, that John's right. talking People about? about that it's injuries. Yeah. I mean, it, well, you know, I think it's injuries drive gambling and fantasy. That's the point, Correct. Right? right? I mean, right. you get your quote right. lines, you get your lines and that's a big deal. Everybody wants to know if the lines doing this or that. But why? Because the injuries affect that. Right, Paul, it's a great point. It's a great point. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, one of the one of the questions in particular cuz that's what's being talked about right now is Joe Shane. Cranky Joe Shane from that last, you know, press conference. From my perspective, this is how I see it. They're asking him questions specifically about cornerback. There is no way for him to answer that that doesn't give leverage to, let's just say, who knows what's happening. Maybe they're trying to make a trade. Maybe they're negotiating with a free agent. No matter how he answers that, it gives leverage if they sound desperate for a guy. Let's be honest. They need depth. They need probably some better in depth at cornerback. But talking about it to the media just gives leverage to whoever they're working with to try to fix that problem. Yeah, and Jay, so I'll, I'll throw something else on top of it, too. Joe Shane is not going to comment directly about what he thinks of a player and how they're playing. Right. And he is not going to comment on expectations and like putting a number on how many games he thinks this team should or could win. Because you right. because it, it does you no favors and you cannot win. It does not help the organization to make comments on those types of things because it will get used against you at some point. There, There's just... It, it doesn't help you. So he's going to give... You know his version of, of no comments on those types of questions, and frankly, I and I understand why the media wants to ask those questions. I get it. I totally understand where they're coming from on it. But Joe's not going to answer them because it's not going to, 
If, if him answering the question is not going to help him, his head coach, or the organization they work for... Then don't answer he's it. Not, and, and he shouldn't answer it. But right. again, I, I get why the media ask it, and I understand why Joe yeah. wouldn't want to give straight answers to those questions. Jay, I'll give you one more point to ponder. If Brian Dable or Joe Shane give a definitive answer on something, and then circumstances change, and it forces them to change their opinion or their direction... You know what happens? They then get called out by the media because, oh, you said this. Yeah, but things changed. Well, we don't care. You said this. You said you weren't going to do that. Or you said you were going to do this. And you didn't wind up doing it. Well, see, right. so so what, what do they need that kind of grief for? So if I'm a head coach or a general manager, I'm staying away from as many definitive statements as I possibly can because I'm just going to get possibly rip for it on the back end now on the other side the media makes definitive statements all the time and nobody holds them accountable which is right. unfortunate i make sure i hold you accountable paul and you can because i'm here <laughs> i'm here I'll, I'll take i stand up for everything that i say and i'll always be around to answer to it and by the way this is not a, and by the way this is not a normal press conference jay until joe shane got here yeah. the giants general manager i don't think ever spoke right before the season like this right they spoke at the right. start of camp and that was it so this is something new with Joe, if I'm not mistaken. I correct? want I, I want to say that George Young and Ernie Corsi going back a ways. Yeah, but si si since I've been here with 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 Jerry Reese and no Dave Gettleman, they never this did has not a been this has not been about. like 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 the last week of August or first week of September. So right. this is extra one, access they usually don't get. Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Finish up. That's great. No, that's great. This is the last thing, and I have a I have a a fan giveaway idea. So this this sounds may sound crazy, but here's the deal. Okay. I love, and I have a little bit of Parcells in me in the way that you know playing mind games with your opponents. You know, I, I used to love it when he would put Dallas in their navy blue jersey. <laughs> I loved it. So how about this? Sometime between uh, before October twentieth, the the Giants print off single Terry blue and on, for blue jerseys and white jerseys and hand them out to eighty thousand people. Just to slap over their twenty six Barclays. Just throwing that out there. So. Thanks for the call. I appreciate the call. I think you probably go T shirt there, not jersey. I think the jersey might get a little pricey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think T-shirt would be more realistic. Maybe just the nameplate. <laughs> Give out the nameplate. Like How about maybe, that? Maybe a, maybe a flag or a pendant of some kind, maybe. Uh, 201-939-4513. Real quick, folks, go subscribe to the John Settle Podcast. Uh, really good episode up there right now. We have our NFC East Reporter Roundtable. Uh, Robert Mays, who hosts the Athletic Football Show podcast. Uh, one of my favorite NFL podcasts. That is either up right now or will be shortly. It's up now, and hopefully it'll be up on YouTube soon as well. Uh, that was one of my favorite season previews we've done all, all year. We really get in-depth on the Giants. We go a little over 20 minutes or so, or actually closer to 30 minutes, I think. Yeah. And um, we end up uh, really going in-depth on the Giants on both sides of the ball. And I think he paints what the optimistic picture would be for what this team could be if everything goes right. So I suggest you go check that out in the Giants Huddle Podcast, which, by the way, is, I think, now almost or completely rebranded the Giants Podcast Network podcast feed. You can find it on the Giants mobile app, Giants.com slash podcast, or just search for Giants Podcast Network. That should be popping up. All right, let's go to uh, Gary in Virginia. He's up next. Hi, Gary. Hey, how you guys doing? We're good, man. I got a uh, D-line question and a fun question I do with my buddies at the end of the year for uh, depth chart stuff. Sure, but, uh, bring it. First question is, what percent do you think the uh, we'll do, well, I guess we'll call it the NASCAR package with the three DNs and Dexter Lawrence, or do you think they'll do it at all? That's a good question. We did not see them line up that way in training camp. What they've done in practice this week, we can't tell you because we weren't allowed out there this week to watch practice. For what they do next week, who knows? Shane Bowen was asked in his last media availability, which I believe was about 10 days ago now, give or take, Paul, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And he said they would consider moving Ojolari inside in some of those, those quote-unquote NASCAR packages. So, Gary, it would not surprise me if we do see that half a dozen third downs a game. Something like that. You get the third and long, second and long. I could see them trying to get all four of those guys on the field. I had suggested that many, many months ago after they acquired Brian Burns that you might see yeah, Dex Dexter down and then three linebackers up, up front. I had suggested that. But to be frank with you, I couldn't really 
figure out how I would configure the three stand-up guys. I'm thinking Thibodeau might be better off inside Ojolari. That's how I would do it, too. But that's not what Bowen said. No. No. Again, he didn't show any of that during training camp. And then all of a sudden, he answered a question and said that could be a possibility, which means he's had something brewing in his mind for a while, and he just didn't show it to anybody. They might be working on that stuff in the next week and a half, and maybe the Vikings are going to be like, whoa, where'd that come from? And the Vikings don't have the most athletic guards. They, they do not. They're big, strong, bruising-type guards. Mm-hmm. So if, it, you, if you can get it one-on-one in space against an Ojolari or a Thibodeau, I think that's advantage Giants. Yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't put a percentage on it, but I won't be shocked if we see that formation at times. Agreed. Oh, yeah, I'd like to see it. That would be cool. Uh, the other question is... Uh, if you could pluck any player from any team on offense, one on defense, not counting quarterback, and money isn't an issue just for one year to play on the Giants, uh, what would you pick? Oh, good question. I like that, Gary. Thanks a lot for the call. Appreciate it, man. Hmm. If I was to pick one player on defense, I'd probably pick Sauce Gardner. That's a good pick. I'd probably pick Sauce. That's a the really other good guy pick. I would consider picking just for one year Chris Jones. Okay. Or maybe Jeffrey Simmons, one of those big, big time defensive tackle types. But yeah. I think I think I would lean towards. I think I'd go corner. I think I'd pick. I think I'd pick Sauce, or if you prefer Sertan from the Broncos, whomever your favorite top cornerback is. I'd probably go Christian McCaffrey on offense. Really? Yeah, I would. Okay, that's an offense. Okay. On offense, I think I'd go McCaffrey only because, again. Neighbors is not a proven headache player yet. He is a rookie. They don't have any headache players on offense. McCaffrey is a major league headache player. So I would probably go there, especially knowing what Brian Dable can do with the various ways that he would utilize getting him the ball. So I'd go McCaffrey on offense and on defense. And I would consider Michael Parsons on defense too, by the way, just because I think Shane Bone would have a lot of fun with him. I'm sure that he would. But I think, again, considering the Giants' young and inexperienced secondary, you made a good call by taking a shutdown corner. Now, whether or not you decided that you wanted to pick Sauce or somebody else, Ooh. that's another story altogether. Um, who, would I, who would I pick on defense? I would not pick a pass rusher because I like the Giants' pass rush right now. And I'm happy with their linebackers. So it would have to be somebody in the secondary. And uh, yeah, I, I I guess Sauce Gardner is probably a good pick, John. I don't I don't think I could dispute that one. <sighs> Offense is tough. Offense is tough. I wouldn't pick a running back. The question: Do you pick like Lane Johnson, someone like that, like the best right tackle in the league? Or I guess I guess Penny Sewell would be the guy you would pick, right? If you're gonna pick a tackle, it would be Penny Sewell because he plays the right side. Yeah. And he's probably, or Tristan Worse. One of those two guys. Yeah. And Worse is moving to the left side this year, but he obviously has been a right tackle. So you could pick either Worse or Sewell. Can't go wrong with that. No, not Cannot. at all. Cannot. I mean. See, my, my take on that would be, though, you to make this pick, I don't do it in a bubble. I'm doing it considering what the Giants oh, have I, at I'm that aware. position. I would still consider doing that. And I, I, I'm okay with Illuminor at right, at right tackle. So I'm yeah, but I'm 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 okay with Singletary running back, but I, I don't think okay. I'd pick, I don't think I'd pick the offensive tackle. The question is, would I just pick Justin Jefferson, and put him in the slot every down? <laughs> let's cook, <pull. laughs> or Ceedee Lamb? Like if you could put leave neighbors outside and then put Lamb or Justin Jefferson in the slot next to him, that's who boy, who boy, it's pretty wild. That could be fun. It's a good question. Or that's a fun one to come. If you really want to attack a weakness, do you pick George Kittle or Sam Laporta? Plug him in a tight end. I I I like what the Giants have at tight end, despite those guys. I don't think that there's that much of a of a of a overall impact to the offense. Oh, I think there is passing game wise, I think there is. Well, you could argue that Kelsey then, right? Yeah, but I feel Kelsey's he kind of went on cruise control in the regular season last year. Yeah, well. <laughs> I don't want a guy on cruise control in the regular season. It's an interesting question. You know, I would want to... Uh, 
the receivers are just so good. I'd have trouble saying no to those guys. But if oh, you're, if you're trying to fill a hole, I, I would say I would, it's hard to say no to Sam Laporta or George Kittle in that situation. It's hard. Mm-hmm. What would you go, Pearson? Would you go wide receiver there or would you go tight end? By the way. Or, or offensive tackle. Hawkinson's not a bad pick there either. Yeah, he's hurt though. This is I any, understand. Any team? Any, any player off any team on offense you could add to the Giants roster, who would you add? Not a quarterback. I'd, I'd probably go Kittle. You go Kittle, huh? Yeah. Hmm. You gotta help you in the running game too. You're a Kittle guy. I feel like uh, I, I was when he was in college. I know. I wanted him here desperately. I know you did. Calm down. It didn't happen. I'm, I'm aware. I didn't mean to bring up bad memories for you. It's okay. I ache every time I see him in a Niners jersey. Back to the phones. 201-939-4513. Donnie in Queens. Donnie, what's up? Hey, guys. How are you? What's Hi. going on? Well, thanks for getting us through another off season, all us, us football junkies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll continue to listen to you as the season goes on. Yeah, by the way, Donnie, just for the heads up, be- we will have one more show, which I'll consider an off-season show on Monday, on Labor Day. We are going to be here. We'll do a show live. It'll be Cytac and I. We're going to do our Super Bowl and playoff predictions, too. I'll grab those for Paul just so we have his written down, even though he's okay. not going to be on the show. And then once we hit Tuesday, folks, we are full in on the Vikings. We are just all in, four straight days. Giants-Vikings will break it all down. So we will be live on Labor Day. I just wanted Donnie to give me the opportunity to promote that. Uh, for the folks that will be around and want to listen, we'll be live at 1230 on Labor Day. Go ahead, Donnie. Sorry. Yeah. So the, so the true sickles like me will be sitting on the beach listening. Yes, correct. Um, <laughs> I wanted to give my bold prediction. And it's both positive and negative. All right. What do you got? They're going to start. The Giants are going to start the season 4-0, and but fail to make the playoffs at 9-8. and Oh. <laughs> Shades of 2009. That 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 sounds like a brutal season to live through, Donnie. But if you told me before the year the Giants would, it's a good question for you, Paul. If and yeah. I'm curious, if I told you before the year started, the Giants would go nine and eight, but they would miss the playoffs. Would you sign on the dotted line for that right now? Yes. So would I. But not if they started four and zero. No, see, I don't care about that. You can't look at it that way. He said that. No, I know, but I but. The bottom line, though, is that you won the nine games. What what, what difference does the order make? Well, because I mean, if they were four, and, if they're four and zero, oh, and then finish nine and eight, that probably means some devastating injury ruined the no, season. That was actually going to be my question to, for Donnie. Donnie, so are you you don't think Daniel's going to make it to the end, and that's why they fall apart in December, or or what? No, I just I just think that I, I'm I'm not as high on Cleveland as everyone else is. Um, I think I think I think Deshaun Watson's a disaster. Um, he could be. I think, I think, kind of like you mentioned with Dallas, I think Dallas has got some figuring out to do that may not happen. Look, they started what six and one, seven and one in 2022, and they finished nine and eight. So it's a very similar path. Where I'm expecting a hot start, but that stretch with the Bengals and Philly and uh, Seattle, it does get tough. And you know, I think I think they're a nine and eight team that they, that gets off to a really good start. Keep in um, mind something though: you know, if they're four and zero. Oh, that means they're already 2-0 and in the NFC East before you get to the rest of the schedule. So, right. so that... I guess they get swept by Philly and then split with Dallas eventually um, and probably sweep Washington, too. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, think, if you, I, think, if, I think if you want to get to 9-8, I think you would have to sweep Washington. You know, that, that'll, yeah. by, by your count, that's three wins in the division. You know, Donnie, I got to tell you, you're usually... Four, four, four. Four, four? yeah, that'll be four, but sweep... sweep Oh, no, it'll be three, Donnie. They, you said you would split with Dallas, you would sweep Washington and get swept by Philly. Oh, correct. Right. Yes, yeah, right. That's three. That's right. That's three. Yes. Donnie, honestly, you're usually a very sober fan in that you're very realistic. I'm I'm actually pretty – maybe surprised isn't the right word, but I'm – nine wins, I think, it's is, a, bold is a good number coming from you. Bold. Yeah, I like it. I it's think nine's legitimate. I, I'm, I'm, I've am i already gone on record this week. Nine, nine and eight is the Giants' record at the end I, of the look, season. I'm with you. Me, I think they can do it. Yeah. The entire season that boils down to this. Paul's not going to like this. Can they start 2-0 or not? Because to me, if they don't, like if, I think if they lose to Minnesota, the absolute wheels could fall off this thing. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to win the game. But to me, that's the whole thing. Like they, they just, they're not good enough to like not beat Minnesota and Washington on their schedule. Well, I will say this, but Donnie. I, I will say this. If, if they go 1-1 one one in the first two, I would say that's disappointing. But I don't think it's a season killer. If you start right. 0-2 somehow, 
That's really bad. Uh, you will see some long faces. I get. I'm not going to say the season's over because there's only two games and anything can happen. But I would be. I would be very. On, when I host that Monday show coming off that Washington game, you will see a very despondent John Schmelk if the Giants are and, and you will get And you will get a somber Donnie from Queen's <laughs> Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Guys, enjoy your holiday weekend. Thanks for taking all my calls and always enjoy talking to hey, you. Hey, Donnie, Thanks, Donnie, appreciate it. You've been one of our best callers in the offseason. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, uh, the Giants need to be getting on that highway right out of the gate. And, you know... And I think Dable knows that, too, which is why he's handled the summer the way he Absolutely has. Absolutely does he know that. I wish the starters would have played a little bit more, but that's always my wish. Having said that, though, again, we go to the boxing analogy. I'm sorry, but I look at Washington and I look at Minnesota. These are not heavyweights. No, they're not. They're not. No. And, and if you want to be a 500 team or have a sniff at the playoff conversation, you need to be able to beat the non-heavyweights. I don't think the Vikings are a bad team, but I think they're a very middle-of-the-road team. You know, you middle, need, middle third of the league. You need to beat the middleweights. I think their offense is going to be very good. I don't want to tease too much what I'm going to say next week. I actually think, and I, gosh, I am going to, I am going to, fall down the cliff hanging on to this guy. I think I think Darnold's going to have a good year, and that's fine. I'll probably end up being wrong again. I hold on to guys too, John. No, I know. I know. It's okay. I, I'm usually smart enough to let go. I cannot let go of Sam I, Darnold. I, I will not. I, I can't do it. I will not shoot darts at you for that. Oh, I hold on to yeah, guys no, myself. I shouldn't, though. Have I, conviction. I still, it's I okay. Josh Rosen is going to be the guy. <laughs> well, you need some serious help, Pearson. By the way, apparently, <laughs> speaking of which, Pearson, I think my understanding is Mac Jones had a pretty good off season. Uh, where do you wind up again, Mac Jones? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I heard he I heard he actually had a pretty good summer in Jacksonville. Highest QBR in the preseason. <laughs> See, he's all over it. But it's preseason. Yeah, but it's but it's preseason exactly. He's he's not as bad as he looked. I think I think no, he could be I okay. I don't think he's as I think no, you know I don't think he's as bad as he looks. I agree with that. So I I think the Vikings defense is is very vulnerable. Brian Flores is going to throw the kitchen sink at the Giants in week one. Oh, there's and no doubt. we have to see whether or not that, that – this is a big Daniel Jones figuring Brian Flores out game. Can he figure out what he's trying to do, figure out counters to it, and kind of move on for, and, and beat him and beat him with those tricks and his disguises and blitzes and his drop eight and all that different stuff that he does. John, all I got to say is let's bring it on because no, uh, I can't wait. I'm I'm done with my patience. I'm ready to go. I wish we no, could play I, Sunday. I I'm totally with you, and I think I think the first game out of the shoot, I think it's going to be a high scoring affair. I oh, think both could teams be. are between absolutely. I could think be. both teams are scoring at least twenty points. I think but I would have shocked me if both teams get the thirty in this game. To be wow. honest with you, I think I think it's going to be a shootout celebrating the Giants' 100th <laughs> season on Sunday, which will be great. Great for the fans as long as well the Giants Well, it was two years ago right in Minnesota, remember that? Regular season game? 100%. Went right down to the Look, final drive. Kevin O'Connell's a really good offensive coach. I really, I, I think he'll do well. And I think Brian Dable will do well as well, which is uh, the guy that Charlie wants to talk about in Portland, Maine. Hi, Chuck. Hey, guys. What's, What's up? up? You can take one more. <laughs> hey, uh, look, I, I want to... Uh... Wish a uh, happy birthday to Pearson. It is Pearson's is, birthday. Uh, I was going to say that. Today. How did you know that, Charlie? I, I'm psychic. I, I know Pearson. Him and I are go way back. It's us New Englanders. <laughs> we just get it. It is. I was yeah, going to do a big different. happy birthday to Pearson at the end of the show, but I can do it now. It's a, and, Charlie, it's a big birthday for Pearson. It too. is. It's not just any birthday. 30? Yep. Is he 30? He is 30. I thought so. I thought so, it. So this is when birthdays start becoming less important, Pearson. Where they they're not really celebrations it's anymore. It's not important. Yes, for a while now. <laughs> it's just like all right. Oh gosh, I'm one year older. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm not gonna get my birthday, but that is that is that is coming up relatively soon as well. Thanks, Charlie. Ah, uh, September September's fifteenth, right? Nope, John? not nope, not the fifteenth. Ah, <laughs> I just had a guess. That a guess. that is a win for me. Well, all right, Charlie, what do you got? <laughs> All right, look, I got a couple things. Yeah. One thing, I can't believe you guys didn't pick the Chargers. What is wrong with you guys? The Chargers are going to be, like, in the championship game. Charlie, their roster the their roster is rough, man. Their no, roster on – roster, dude, they have no wide receivers, and their roster on defense nothing. is rough. They got wide – you know who they're going to get? Book it. Tony's coming there. They're going to get Tony. I maintain I'm my statement. You. <laughs> How exactly is that supposed to help them? That's going to help him. He'll be a punt returner if nothing else. 
you will help. Really? I'm telling you. And, and Charlie, you look, guys, Jim Harbaugh is a uh, – sorry, Jim. John Harbaugh is a very good coach. Justin Herbert exactly. is a very good quarterback. They have two really He's good offensive tackles. I get that. Um, yeah. They got a great offensive Jim, line. Yeah. J- Jim. Oh, I had it right. It was Jim. Yeah. Sorry. I, 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 was, see, I, was I was in my own. Where are my, you going with that? I was that? in my own head on that. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, look, uh, I, I don't – I don't think they. I think they're one year away, Charlie. I think next year at this time, we could talk about that. But I don't think we're there right now. And by the way, well, Jim Harbaugh is a real tough cookie. Do you think he really wants any part of that receiver? Seriously, no matter how badly he oh, needs just, talent, he was just teasing. And by the way, I, Charlie, I don't love their running back room either. No, no, to be no, honest I, with you, Echo's gone. No, I saw. And I saw. I saw, I saw, can't I saw hey, no, I saw a, a news feed saying. Uh, if you uh, just Google it, they, that the Chargers are looking at Tony. That's where they think he's going to end up. I don't know if he will or not, but that's the team that uh, is looking at him. Hey, and uh, I'm just saying. And and the other thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Dave Dable should not say anything about injured players because day to day does not work. The day to day guys end up on the IR, so Dable should not say a word. You know what the NFL should do? They should mandate that the coaches cannot say anything about injured players. They should make their medical team, whoever's head of their medical team, come out and talk about the injured players so you get the real what's going on. HIPAA with rules, yeah. Charlie. HIPAA rules huh? in this country won't let them do that. Honestly, Charlie, the best way to do it is right now they have classifications on Friday, right? On right. Friday you have to designate questionable. Pro- is probable thing anymore? No, right? No, Probable is no. the only thing, but doubtful is. So right. you have questionable, doubtful, or not on the injured list. Right. They need to create some type of other designation for like earlier in the week that has some All type of universal meeting that, that I think would solve some of the issues. All I know is day to day isn't one of those definitions, right? I'm tired of hearing that from Dable because they always end up out for months. Charlie, so day to I, day I, and week to week are two ways of saying I'm not going to tell you what's going right. on with the player. That's all. It's a space filler. That's all it is. Yeah, well, I'm saying that the NFL should mandate that a medical staff. Okay, but they can't. HIPAA rules. No, they I mean, can't no, do I mean, it. You could talk about how long a guy's out. You just can't give details of the yeah. Right. Well, you yeah, could. You're right. You could it. do that. That's all I'm saying. But then, yeah, but then again, but then again, you run into that same problem all the time, especially with medical conditions. Some guys heal quicker than others. Some guys have setbacks, and then some fans think players are dogging it. When exactly. Not. It's, 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 it's exactly. A thing. And would, then if the guys, I if the guys' health status changes in a couple of days, it changes Fine, everything. Then they change their, Then they change it. But at least you're uh, getting it from the but, staff. But, uh, you're not getting it from a coach. Uh, no, who's you're going to have people who are going to be screaming controversy and, and all the other stuff. It's not – no, you can't do it. You can't do it. I'm just, I'm just tired of Dable saying day-to-day because they're not day-to-day. I mean, McFadden is not day-to-day, all right? He's got a groin injury. I don't even think he'll start the first week. And he's been saying day-to-day, day-to-day, getting closer, getting closer. I'm tired of it, you know? He just said somebody else and he just put him on IR. I mean, it's ridiculous. Just don't say anything then. Just say – I don't know. Ask my medical staff. And now, in fairness, usually when happen. usually when a guy and Charlie, thanks for the call. Usually when a guy's going to be out for a, a period of time, he'll say it'll be a while. Well, he said that with with Schlotman yesterday. He said he's hurt. He's going on an injury reserve, and he's going to be a while. It's not a week to week thing. He came right out and said that. He also does say, "I don't know. I have to talk to the medical medical staff." Yeah, he does say that too. Yep. I would say if he says a guy's day-to-day, it means they have a chance of playing that week. If a guy is week-to-week, you're looking at at least a couple of weeks before he's back. Yeah. And if it's a while, you're looking at a potential IR skit. That's how we translate it. That would be my <laughs> Brian Dable translatable injury machine for the people that want to make use of that. Mike in Indiana will wrap us up today. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you guys doing? We're Hi. fantastic, Mike. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I'll make this as quick as possible. So uh called in last year for a bold prediction for Darius Slayton to be – the uh, thousand yard wide receiver not named Darren Waller. Uh no he fell short to that, like seven hundred some odd yards, but uh seven hundred seventy, uh, which really by like the way, what... Mike, real quick, that's seven hundred and seventy yards for Darius Slayton, most yards by a Giants wide receiver since Daniel Jones was drafted. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Which is not, not great, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not great. But uh anyways, I like Donnie's prediction of the nine and eight. The four and may be pushing it. Uh but I think the one way that would be a successful season to me. 
the trenches, the success in the trenches this year means everything. I think we flip flop and we have more sacks on defense this year than we have sacks allowed on offense. I like it. And I think the way that I think the way that's achievable. And I don't know when the last time the Giants have had 50 plus sacks. I think we have to have 55 sacks this year on defense. And I think we get that with our front seven that we have. And uh, you guys can take it from here. I appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks, it. Gary. I like it. I think that's a good one. I would put the number around 45. I think that's going to be kind of what the breaking point is. Like, I'd if you be can thrilled with 45. Hold under 45 and get more than 45, I think that's a good 50. More than 50 sacks is a lot. That's asking a lot. Mm-hmm. I think 45 is probably a decent number to aim for. Shockingly, that's the number I picked my over under, which is not the surprise when I did the sack number. So, yeah, uh, you know, here's the one thing that you got to remember. In spite of the fact that the Giants secondary is rather inexperienced and young, and we all understand that. I mean, even the coach and the GM have expressed some concern about that position. And we did, by the way, see the reports today about the veteran quarterback coming in the building. Right. Um, but there's nothing official on that yet. Hopefully, we'll, if you know something on, on Monday, we'll, we'll obviously talk about it. Yeah, but, but in spite of what they've said, the game is still football 101. It still comes down to the trenches. It always will. That's why they used all the resources on Brian Burns. Bingo. It will never change. And what did they do? They went on Brian Burns. They made the trade. They gave him the extension. And where did they spend most of the free agent money? On the other side of the trenches. They know this. Joe Shane's not a fool. He gets it. The trenches is always where it's going to start. So that's not a you know a world breaking kind of kind of statement. I mean it it still starts there. Everything else filters out from the trenches. Agreed. All right, I'm going to go through my over-unders quick here before we say yeah. goodbye, all right? Comments as we go. I'm just going to roll through them. If you have something, interrupt me. Daniel Jones, I had passing yards 36.50. I went over on that. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to get to 4,000, but I think he's going to get to 38. But I think we'll be in that neighborhood. We thought the same. Again, if he, that's if he stays healthy. This is assuming 17 games here, folks, which, 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 which makes it a little bit dicey. But remember, 17 games... That's the equivalent of about 220 or so yards per game. That's not a huge number. No. It's not a huge number to get to 3750. Um, Devin Singletary, oh, I'm sorry. Passing touchdowns for Daniel Jones, 21 and a half. I think we'll probably get around 22 or 23. That number, I think, is right on it, though. If you look at it last year, folks, not as many quarterbacks as you think finished with 22 or more touchdown passes. I think it was only 12 or 13 when I looked it up. <laughs> How many played every snap? <laughs> well, but my point is that that's this isn't... A couple years ago, guys were getting 40 touchdown throws that's true. regularly. Last year, I think only two or three guys got 30. Mm-hmm. So those numbers have been deflated over the years, which is why I put it where I did. Rushing touchdowns, three and a half. Well, you and Sytac went under. I'm going over on that. I don't care that he's an ACL. Dable's using him in the run game when he can. It's fine. And I think he's going to have a couple of those on read options. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, interceptions, nine and a half. Again, I just think throwing volume this year is going to be way up. And interceptions are going to happen. But if that means a lot more explosive plays, I'll live with it. Mm-hmm. Devin Singletary on the ground, 865 yards. I think if he maintains this 75 to 80% carry rate, I think he will top this. That was a hard one for me. But I think Tyrone Tracy is going to creep into those numbers a little bit. And I believe that's why I was under. And that's why I went under as well. <laughs> I think he'll have a good year. I think his efficiency will be strong, but I think Tracy will cut into his volume, yes. which will get him below 865. Mm-hmm. All right, Malik Neighbors, guys, I'm sorry I'm all in. Uh, receptions, 86 and a half, over. Receiving yards, 1,100, over. <laughs> receiving touchdowns, eight and a half, over. I'm in. I'm all in. <laughs> I'm a sucker. Call me what you want. <laughs> He's been the best rookie I've ever seen in the Giants training camp. I'd like to get your take on that. I asked Bob Paul, what's the best rookie you've ever seen in a Giants training camp? For me, it's neighbors, and it's not particularly oh, close. Oh, wow. Papa said shocky for him. Came in right away and was pretty he unbelievable. He was um, Carl Banks. Okay. Banks came right in, and immediately he was really, really good, right from the get-go. Shockey's another good one, though. I, I would agree with Bob. On offense, it would be Shockey. On defense, it would be it would be Banks for me. Does Neighbors top Shockey for you? <sighs> Shockey had a better preseason than Neighbors did. Okay. But but neighbors, Prabble practices. That's different. Neighbors had some very spectacular things at practice that Shockey didn't necessarily right. have. Tight end. But in the games, right. in the games, okay. Shockey had a nice preseason. One against Houston. Everybody remember the Hall of Fame game when he did mm-hmm. a Pavaro-like catch. 
I mean, it was hard to beat that. All right. Wando Robinson, I have it at 74 and a half catches. I'm going to go over on that. You and Matt both went under. I think he's going to get a lot of short, quick throws. He might catch one or two wide receiver screens a game, which will get him halfway. Remember, 75 catches, folks, over 17 games. That's only about four and a half catches per game. Mm -hmm. It's not a ton. It's not a ton. So I think he has a chance um, of getting there, to be honest with you. I have him under 850 yards. But again, I think it'll be a lot of short stuff. And then under three and a half touchdowns. I think they have other guys that'll be bigger red zone targets, whether it's the tight end or Malik Neighbors or Jones running it in or running the football. So okay. I'll go under on the receiving touchdowns. I could see him having a rushing touchdown, though, like an end around or some mm -hmm. fancy stuff in the backfield. Could. So remember, that was receiving touchdowns only. Correct. All right, defense. Dex at six sacks. Uh, he had six and a half in his monster year two years ago. Last year, he had four and a half, right, if I'm not mistaken. This was hard. Yeah, I went under here, um, and that doesn't mean I think Dexter Lawrence is going to be any less dominant. I just recorded a podcast uh, with Cody Alexander uh, that's coming down on Thursday, breaking down everything Shane Bowen's defense for the opener. And I said to him, look, you can have a – Dexter can have five sacks again, but he might be more impactful than an edge guy that has 13. It's true. It's true. So I'm going to go under on the sack total. It doesn't mean he's not going to be a monster. Uh, Brian Burns, nine and a half. <clears throat> again, only one year in his career when he's had double-digit sacks. I think this is his second. I think he gets to 12 or 13 mm -hmm. because I do think the Giants, because of their more explosive offense, will play with the lead a little bit more this year to give him more of a chance yep. to rush the passer. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau at eight sacks. You had an over there, Cytac and under. I'm going to go under there too. Again, if you look at his pressure rate, he's a guy whose pressure rate is rookie year and second year almost identical, even though his sacks went from four to 11 and a half. Right. So that tells me that maybe the number last year was a little inflated. The, there's two questions, though, that can make me wrong about this that I'm very open to. How much does he get helped by Dexter and Burns? Mm -hmm. And the way Thibodeau has talked about himself this year, <clears throat> pardon me, he's almost playing like more of a pocket pusher now than a guy that's going to win around the edge where he's trying to push and collapse the pocket. So while he might not get big sack numbers, I could see him contributing to sacks by not giving quarterbacks room to scramble out to his side because he's holding his ground there and pushing the pocket, which will give Burns and Dex the ability to get home, even though Thibodeau's not getting credit for that particular sack. He's going out of his way to stress how he is more of a power rusher now. And That's why I'm saying pushing the pocket. And Burns is more of the speed guy. And he, you know, coming out of Oregon, that's not the way everybody saw it. Right. And we, I had that conversation with Robert Mays, by the way, in the Giants huddle, which I thought was good. Uh, Deontay Banks, two and a half interceptions. Me and you will both be under on this. Cytac went over. I just wonder how much he's going to get targeted right. for one. And one of the two interceptions last year was a bit of a gift. The other one was a really nice play. He's not a ball hawk. Yeah, but he's never played a lot of zone either. So we'll no. see if that changes this year. This was, That was a tough one for me, to be honest with you. That was one of the last ones I answered. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that. And then safety interceptions. I don't want to do awareness for individual safety, so I just took the group. Yeah. Um, I did not say whether or not this includes Isaiah Simmons. Did you guys talk about whether or not this includes Simmons? We did not. Did you want to? Do you want to assume no? I consider Simmons a linebacker okay. still. So I'm going to say, I think Cytac considers him not a safety too. So let's push Simmons inside and just say this is Belton, Newbin, uh, Pinnock, and then whomever else they happen to add there. Mm -hmm. uh, Javarius Owens, by the way, uh, no longer on the practice squad. That happened. Uh, no longer on the roster. He got added back to the practice squad. Um, so I'm going to go under here. Nine and a half is a lot. It is. You're getting you know three or four for each guy at this point. That's a lot. So I'm going to go under on the interceptions. Remember, the Giants did. Uh, they were tied for the lead league in takeaways last year. That's going to be a fact or fiction question we're going to do next week. Uh, if they do want to be up near the top again, this will probably have to be an over. I yes. think it's going to be an under. Yep, fair enough. I mean, with more zone, uh, with the fact that we think the other teams won't always be playing with a lead like they have the last couple of years, you know, I took a, I took a shot. I took a flyer. And I think you're going to see a lot of the three safeties. I really do. No, I think you do too. And and so with that, I'm thinking if one guy gets six, another guy gets three, and another guy gets three, well, that that gets you over nine and a half. Mm. So that's what that's what I went for. All right, that's all we have uh, time wise in terms of Big Blue Kickoff Live presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle, the New York Football Giants. Giants.com/slash tickets, folks. You still have a chance to, to score your seats. 
Go find them. Season tickets, individual tickets. They're available at Giants.com slash tickets. And uh, Giants TV. It's our connected TV streaming app. All of our great original video content is up there. We do have two great player profiles that have come out over the past couple of weeks. Wando Robinson and John Michael Schmitz. Uh, Don back in the back does a great job of putting those together. Um, I have not watched them yet. My plan is to watch them over the weekend with the wife. She likes watching the, the player profiles. They're really well put together. Uh, make sure you check those out on Giants TV, which you can find on all of your smart TVs, Roku, Amazon Fire TVs, Apple TVs. It's free. Or, of course, you can watch those videos on the Giants mobile app. For Paul Dottino, I'm John Schmelk. Enjoy your last football, at least NFL football-free weekend. Uh, happy Labor Day, everybody, and we'll see you on Monday at 1230.